I want to say right off the bat, I'm not exactly sure how successful this project is going to be. Usually I'm pretty confident going in, but this time I'm a little bit sceptical. The goal is going to be to make a face mill. I'm sure most of us have seen them used by the pros to remove huge amounts of material. And in a production shop where removing material quickly is pretty important, you can imagine why they're pretty popular. They're not really aimed at us hobby machinists, but I think there are reasons why you'd probably want one. Let's take this piece of steel, and let's say I need to take 10 mil off the top. There's going to be several ways of approaching it. You could chop most of it off if you had a good enough saw to do it, maybe a band saw or something similar. You could also come in with an end mill and remove most of the material that way. Not the fastest method, and I'd probably flood it to stop the cutter burning up, but it definitely would work, and I've done it that way a lot of times in the past. There'd just be a fair amount to clean up afterwards. You could also fly cut it if you really wanted to, but they really only work best as a finishing tool. That single cutting edge really limits how fast and how deep you can push the cutter, but it doesn't mean that I haven't tried it in the past to really push these tools beyond their limit. And that's where a face mill will come in. With a face mill, if we design it correctly, should hopefully be able to come in and remove a lot of material very quickly. Now like my lathe tooling, these tools will take carbide inserts. I originally picked these ones up online for about 30 bucks, and these are S-E-H-T. They're carbide milling inserts, and they looked a lot sharper online, but when I actually got them, they turned out to be quite dull. And I think they'd need a lot of horsepower and rigidity to get working properly. And that's something that my mill just doesn't have. So instead, I bought some of these high rake inserts. I think they're made for aluminium, but I've gotten these types of inserts to work before on materials other than aluminium, and it should keep the cutting load low. Now to make the face mill body, I'm going to be using a piece of 50mm cold drawn steel. 50mm is on the smaller side, but a smaller tool will better suit my mill. And in any event, it's going to be bigger than any end mill that will fit on my mill. Now strictly speaking, I don't have to make it myself. They do sell smaller face mills off the shelf, but we're looking at close to 140 bucks for a good quality one of those that takes these inserts. And I'm still not exactly sure how well it's going to work, so it would be a pretty big gamble. Plus that price is only for the face mill body. I still have to buy or make an arbor so that it would fit with my mill. If I make it myself, I can make it as one singular piece, so it can be a bit smaller and a bit more rigid. The second reason why I'm going to make it myself is the small face mills that I've seen take four inserts and I'd rather it have three so I can keep the cutting load low and hopefully give this project a fighting chance of working. More inserts means I'd have to feed it at a higher speed to keep it cutting and that means more horsepower which I just don't have a lot to begin with. I did see some three insert cutters but I just can't see those types of inserts cutting all that well on my mill. So whilst I get the piece of steel cut off, we can quickly jump into SolidWorks and get a rough idea of what we're going to make. Now originally the plan was to come in with a big end mill and take a big cut out of the side to create the flute. But it looked a bit crude and there just wasn't much material between each of the cutting inserts which might have caused some issues. So after a few changes, I ended up with a more conventional style that can hopefully be made on manual machinery. At least hopefully. Just because it looks like it can be made, doesn't mean it actually can. And I'm looking at you, every one of my friends who became an engineer or a designer. Please make stuff that can actually be made. Now the design will have the inserts tilted back at a bit of an angle to make the cutting edge effectively sharper and make the cut a little bit easier. So we'll start off on the lathe to get the shape roughly machined in. We'll clean up the end with the half center before getting started on machining that 20 millimeter shape.
And with these shanks, you want to be pretty spot on dimension, so it's a good idea to break out the micrometers. What I found out in the past is if it's 15 or 20 microns under, the tool starts to slip out of the collet when you're doing really heavy machining. With the shank now done, I'll fit the old compound and then set it up to cut the chamfered features of the tool. And I tell you what, that's actually a pretty good finish for those inserts. To machine the other side, I'll hold the shank in the collet chuck, which is a lot easier than dialing it in on the forejaw. Okay, that cleaned up really well, so let's get it on the mill and cut the rest of the features. I'll be doing most of the work with the dividing head, given that I have to index it to create the three flutes. To create the flute, I'm going to be using this two flute carbide router bit. I didn't have the correct size ball end mill on hand, and in any event, these carbide router bits work surprisingly well on metal if you know what you're doing. I set the dividing head to point 10 degrees off to the left and it's tilting upwards at 20 degrees and this should hopefully provide the proper clearance and space for the insert. I had to run the cutter at about 2500 RPM to get the carbide working but it definitely was doing a good job. And once the first flute was done, I can then index it 120 degrees to do the second one. The next few cuts were an attempt to remove material to help expose the area above where the insert would go. It would hopefully make it easier to look down on it and machine it, but it didn't seem to do all that much, and to be honest, I was kind of eyeballing it. And to be completely fair, there really isn't all that much info on actually designing face mills specifically, so I was learning as I was going along. Next I'll cut the seat for the insert, which was made a lot easier since the insert is a square. I just have to make sure that each seat is the same size, which makes the DRO come in very handy for this feature. The final thing left to do is make the hole for the locking screw.
And there we have it. On face value, it ended up looking a lot better than I was expecting. I think if I cold blued it and gave it some laser etchings, I could probably pass it off as being a store-bought piece. Now because it's one piece, rather than a body bolted to an arbor, it's going to be a lot more compact than an off-the-shelf model. It also should be a bit more rigid, although on this machine and setup, I doubt rigidity is going to be a limiting factor. At least the rigidity of the tool itself. With all that said, let's get it on the mill and see if it actually works. Let's start out easy with some aluminium. I'll dial in a 2mm depth of cut and let's see how it goes. Well, I'll tell you what, that was actually pretty impressive, and I don't even think the mill broke a sweat. And that's a much better finish than I was expecting for a face mill. And I'll tell you what, those are some pretty impressive chips, at least for a mill this size. Aluminium is pretty easy though, so let's try a piece of cold rolled plate. I'll start off with a half mil depth of cut, which is about double with what I push with the fly cutter. Well, I'll tell you what, that half mil looked pretty easy for my mill. It's definitely a smaller area than my fly cutter can manage, but it's a lot deeper of a cut and a much faster cut too. So I guess let's try one mil and see what happens. Well, one mil is definitely up there, and I am pushing my mil to the limit, but I'm pretty happy. I did end up stalling it about halfway through, but that was just me getting a bit greedy with the feed. Overall, really impressed, but it is good to know the machine's limit. And I tell you what, those are some pretty impressive chips too. I am able to push the mill to do about a 1.5mm cut in hot rolled steel, which I think is really impressive for this machine, and it's going to be a real game changer in the future. And for anyone who is wondering, these inserts are holding up really well for machining steel, even if they aren't specifically made to machine it. And of course, once an edge does break, all I have to do is rotate the insert, and I can get back to machining. And of course we get 4 cutting edges per insert. It's one reason why I really like machining with carbide compared to high speed steel. Yes you can re-grind high speed steel and mill flutes, but I just don't have the jig to do it. With inserts all you have to do is chuck in a new insert and you can get back to machining. And for anyone who was wondering, I did try out those other inserts that I first bought, and whilst they work way better than I was expecting, I'm only able to push them about half as much as I can with the other inserts. And the finish just isn't as good as what I can get with those other inserts. These inserts probably last longer than the other inserts, but I can't see myself using them all that much. And that about does it. Overall, I'm really happy with this project. I didn't see it working all that well, but I am really chuffed with the results that I'm getting. And it's going to be a real game changer, and it's going to be one of those tools that you're going to be seeing a lot of in the future. That's about it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.